Kevin, um, slightly unusual situation. I suppose this whole year has been unusual, but no Neil Warnock this weekend. How have, um, how have things been in the run-up to the game? Well, pretty much as normal. Um, as you know, myself and Neil and Ronnie, we've worked a long time. Myself and Neil going back 30-odd years. Um, and it's just a normal day. Um, we keep in contact with Neil, uh, with Neil every day. And so if there's anything specific that we want to do or talk about, we get that done first thing in the morning. But the rest is as per normal. So, And the lads have been excellent. You know, really good response from the players. And a lot of say the club is a big club and it's well run and it's being run properly. So there's no problems. How is Neil? Have you spoke to him today? Yeah, he's fine. I mean, it's a frustrating thing for everybody. Uh, but he's fine. And uh, listen, we just wish him all the best. We want him to get uh, as well and as quick as we can. But certainly talking to him today, it wouldn't be too long if he was a normal flu. He'd be back tomorrow. But uh, clearly, you know, we follow all the protocols and he's quite right to do so. Um, there are reports today that uh, one of the players has tested positive for COVID-19. Are those reports correct? There was a player positive last last week. Um, and uh, so he's obviously followed the protocol and it's an isolated situation. And uh, we haven't seen him, and he was tested, and, and as I say, the proper protocol was followed. Uh, but no different to what we're hearing ev everywhere else at the moment. Um, I know that you know in the football league pyramid, clubs are not now testing for COVID nineteen as regularly as they were at the back end of last season. Is it an issue for you? Um, well, look. I'm a football man, so I follow the medical side, and that's what we've been. You know, we've got a club doctor here, or two club doctors here, and they've been very stringent on everything that we've done since we've been back, and we will follow everything that he tells us to do. And, and uh, as I said, you know, you can't walk into this club without protection and and following the protocols that the club and the doctor have set down. Brilliant. Um, Bournemouth this weekend um, at home and in front of a thousand fans, which. You know, you'll be pleased to, to finally sort of see a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Well, certainly, I think it'll be, we'll, we'll get the ball back from the stand quicker, that's for sure, with a thousand fans in. Um, it is going to be strange again to see fans in, um, but we're over the moon that we've got some coming in. And, and Bournemouth, obviously, tough, tough test, just newly relegated from the Premier League and obviously still have a lot of quality players. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we looked at the two teams that we had to start off with and, and they are arguably the two strongest squads in the in the division. And uh, I think they made something like 11, 12 changes for the Crystal Palace game during the week uh, and brought in the likes of Brooks, Harry Arter and people like that who were all in the Premier League last season. So, you know, this is, you know, back to back two tough games. But what we're looking for is a, a fairly a repeat performance as that we got against Watford against, uh, you know, as I say, a very, very good Bournemouth side. Um, and you'll be hoping that, you know, I know obviously you've had two defeats up to now, but certainly there wasn't much in the Watford game and the team was changed for the Cup game. So you'll be hoping that this will allow you to get three points and get on, you know, get the first points on the board. Well, certainly we try to win every game that we play in. And, and I think on another day, certainly at Watford, with the performance we had there, we would have got a result. So just a bit unfortunate. We've got to be a little bit more ruthless in both boxes. Um, but... I have to say, I think this team's a long way from when we arrived, you know, uh, in June or July time. And uh, the players have responded and we're, we're pleased with that. Barnsley, to their credit, you know, deserved that win on, on, on uh, Tuesday night. However, you know, we made seven or eight changes and uh, it was an opportunity for us to see what we've got and see how people can react coming into the team. And there were some positive and negatives from the game. But overall, um, if we get a good performance again like tomorrow, uh, a precursor to getting results is performances. And uh, last, when we were here uh, before the breakdown, the performances weren't always uh, consistent. So we're looking for consistency, good performances. And then our experience in football tells you you get uh, consistent results. And that's what we're looking for. In the signs, are you close on, on any more incomings? Well, I, I'm, I'm glad that Neil's doing this part of the job than me, to be honest, because I know how frustrated he's been. And so really... I'm delighted I'm on the training ground. So, But as far as I know, the club's still on and, and aggressively attacking that situation that we know we need to to address and, and get some more people in through the door. And just last one from me. Um, how will it work? Obviously, Neil you know, won't be at the game at the weekend. Will he be in touch with you by, by a telephone or radio or you know, yeah. the team? I, I mean, the beauty of modern technology now, is, for example, Zoom or whatever, we can actually speak to Neil live as the game's going on. So we will do that. There will be... Use it, the use of technology and um, we'll use it to the best of our advantage. 
Brilliant, Greg. Kevin, thank you. Pleasure. Look north, please. Hi, Kevin Alton, and it's Michael Hamilton in, in, in Look North. Um, great to um, hear the news that, um, that, that, that Neil's doing well, but I just wonder how much has it um, disrupted the preparations for this game? I, I suspect, given, given um, what you just touched on there with using technology, that, that Neil's still been a big part of preparations. Exactly, and that's why I say, you know, we're very fortunate at this football club. Um, the infrastructure that they've got here allows us really to use technology to its best advantage, and, and we have done that, and Neil certainly uh, bought into that. And he's been well enough to, to be able to be involved in nearly everything that we've done this week. So um, while he hasn't been on the training ground, uh, myself and Ronnie tend to do a bulk of the work down there. So a lot of that really hasn't uh, affected us in any way, shape or form. Um, so we're, we're pleased with the preparation. The lads, as I say, have been really sharp. Uh, they've responded to everything we've asked them to do. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're quietly confident that we're, that we're building something here. And uh, it's now over to the players at the weekend, you know, because Neil, myself and Ronnie, once they're over the white line, cannot affect it anymore. Um, but certainly Neil will be in contact and uh, throughout the game. And if we need anything, we've, we've got it. We've got it there. And I know we touched on the 1,000 fans that are going to be um, back at the Riverside Stadium. How much of a difference does it make for you and for the players to have some supporters cheering them on? To be fair, I've forgotten what it feels like to have supporters in the ground. It's been that long, hasn't it? Um, but I think anybody that's cheering you on has got to be a big advantage. And uh, it's just going to feel, for the first time, uh, a little bit of normality within the game. Um, so we're, we're really looking forward to them coming back. And, and we know they're all Borough fans. So certainly they'll, they'll give us that little bit of extra roar. Um, Bournemouth and Watford, obviously teams that came down from the Premier League last season. Is, is it good in a way to have two teams that are effectively Premier League squads early doors because it, it, it can help your learning curve in a way for the season ahead? Oh, it's a great question. I, I do. I, and we looked at that. We looked at the fixtures when they came out and, and we... And we there was one train of thought thinking, you know, is it better to maybe get a good start, easy opposition and then get clobbered late down the line? Um, or is it pick up the hardest you've got gives you a good benchmark as to where you are and, and then go from there. And I think really we, we, we went back on the second one. We felt it was, it was a good time to play both of those clubs. Um, we know how strong their squads are. We knew, we knew they'd rotate the uh, Carabao Cup and they'll come back strong again on Saturday. But as I say, I think that, that the, the conclusion we came to was it'll give us a good benchmark as to exactly where we are and also exactly where we need to, from now on, strengthen the squad. Uh, on that note of strengthening the squad, what, what, what's the what's the numbers? Do you have a number of uh, the amount of players that you feel you need to add to the squad before the window shuts? Well, I'm sure I'm sure Neil's alluded to to that sort of number, but uh, for me, looking at it, I would think we're looking two or three, maybe more, to give us that little bit of strength in depth that we need. But it's not about just getting numbers in; it's about getting the quality in that makes a difference. It's no good bringing players in who are exactly uh, what you've got or know better than what you've got, because then you, you're really defeating the object. So. Trying to find players that are better than what we've got, significantly better than what we've got, is is, is proving to be difficult. And the ones that we've obviously, as you know, that we have targeted, uh, we've lost out on one or two for for you know because other clubs have recognised the ability of those players and talent, and have aggressively gone hard after them. And uh, just unfortunate that we haven't been able to sign one or two of those. Uh, and one more from me. I, ju I just want to mention that that C word again of of, of the COVID because uh, I, I know when Phil Parkinson mentioned this week that training was just a bit different. Players were having to socially distance, wear masks in the in the dressing rooms. It's different for everyone, but but how much does it affect just you know your work on a day to day basis? I'll be honest with you, it hasn't affected it in one iota. I mean, if someone's wearing a mask, so what? Um, I still expect them to chase, harry, press, uh, use their ability, test themselves uh, physically, mentally. So all those challenges got nothing to do with the mask. So uh, no, I don't think it's affected us at all.